Yeah. Emma, Caroline and Alex here. Yeah. Emma, you go. Emma, you go. Yeah, Sammy. Where's the little ones? The little That's ones so go sweet. to the front. Yeah, we, we little ones go. Alex, go to the front. Oh, I'm excited. Caroline. Yeah. What are you doing? You can go to the front. Oh, please. Go to the front, Caroline. Yeah. 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 I think uh, Lydia, who's the tallest one at the back on their own? Yeah. 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 Well, they have to because there's seven of you. You can't all really be Who at the back? Uh, Emma at the back. Okay, please. fabulous. Should we do a practice for you?
if I may take a moment for some introductions, my name is Emma Timpson, and my colleague today is Cassie Goring. We are both registrars for Hampshire, and it's our pleasure to be here and join on such a wonderful occasion. The civil marriage ceremony is the exchange of vows by means of two declarations. In their first declaration, the bride and groom will state that they are free to marry, and in the second they will make their marriage promises to each other. During this time, Cassie will affect the legal and historical record of the marriage. And at the end of the ceremony, our bride and groom will be presented with their official marriage certificate, just to prove that it may be Now, before we continue with our ceremony today, it is required that our bride and our groom both state their full names in front of everyone gathered. We always start with the rooms. And who gives this woman to this man? It has long been tradition for a family member to escort the bride to the wedding ceremony. And in this civil ceremony today, Alexander has upheld that tradition by escorting Gemma to meet Luke as an expression of his best wishes for her future happiness. This place the right room at the Aviator Hotel, which we are now met, has been duly sanctioned according to law for the celebration of marriages. And we are all gathered here today to witness the joining in marriage of Luke and <coughs> It is a day they both want to share with you, and we are privileged to be witnesses to what is at heart a private moment between two people as they make a commitment to each other. This is a day of celebration, not just for Luke and Gemma, but for everyone here who has been asked to share in their wedding day. Now, before you are married, I do have to remind you of the solemn and binding character of the vows you are allowed to make. Marriage according to the law of this country is the union of one man with one woman, voluntarily entered into for life to the exclusion of one. But marriage is also a union to provide the love and the friendship, the help and the comfort, in times of joy and in times of hardship. If anyone present knows of any lawful impediment to this marriage, they should declare it now. Oh, I think we're safe to continue. <laughs> <laughs> Absolute silence. Now Luke and Gemma have decided to include two readings into their ceremony today. So I'd like to ask how it's on to come up. This reading is Time in a Bottle by Jim Crachey. If I could save time in a bottle, the first thing that I'd like to do is to save every day till eternity passes away, just to spend them with you. If I could make days last forever, if words could make wishes come true, I'd save every day like a treasure, and then again, I would spend them with you. If I had a box just for wishes, and dreams that had never come true, the box would be empty, except for the memory of how they were answered by you. But there never seems to be enough time to do the things you want to do, once you find them. I've looked around enough to know that you're the one I want to go through time with. I do solemnly declare that I may not, 
Marriage is the promise made in the hearts of two people. It's made us promise that we will not to turn the face of each other. She was saying these words to each other. I call upon. I call upon. These persons here present. These persons here present. To witness that I, Luke Stewart. To witness that I, Luke Stewart. Do take the Gemma Louise in the queue. Do you take the Gemma Louise in the interviews? To be my lawful wedded wife. To be my lawful wedded wife. I call upon these persons here present, these persons here present, to witness that I, Gemma Louise in the interviews, to witness that I, Gemma Louise in the interviews, do you take the mixture, do you take the mixture, to be my lawful wedded wife. Marriage offers opportunities for sharing, understanding, and forgiving. It is contentment, joy, and laughter, believing in each other and supporting each other's hopes and dreams. Marriage deepens and enriches every facet of life. And when two people pleasure, love, and care for each other in marriage, they create a spirit unique to themselves that runs them closer than any spoken or We have now come to the exchange of rings which is the ancient and traditional way of sealing the contract of the mothers. The ring is an unbroken circle which symbolizes unending and everlasting love, and it is the outer sun of the decision of the contract. Now, I think we have a lot to come forward, and if you could please give Jensen to me. Chase the way it's inside. 
Gemma, marriage is a declaration of your love and your commitment, a partnership of sharing and understanding. You are two people with one life to get you now, and in your life, may you enjoy a very special marriage together. The vows you have made today are those required by law, and you have made a solemn and binding contract with each other in the presence of your families, your friends, and your friends. And now, for as much as you have made your vows, each to the other, and have declared the same by the giving and receiving of rings, it gives me very great pleasure to pronounce that you are now husband and wife. <laughs> <laughs>
puppies. Good job it's white screen. All we need is Gemma's uh, her, uh, music that she did, you know, the tune. Oh, oh, oh yeah. behave. You want to see my puppies? <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember that one? <laughs>
second thing is, and I said I only want to say a couple of things, the second thing I want to say was um, that, you know, how uh, uh, beautiful the bride is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, as I said, um, uh, you know, uh, we're going to keep it brief, and I would like you all to be upstanding, uh, and to charge your glasses, and to make a toast to the bride. <laughs> to the bride. 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 I know uh, it's more conventional for the bride to speak at a wedding, but... Uh, when have you been conventional? conventional. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, I just wanted to really say, as, as Alex mentioned, um, I wanted to still say I know that Dad's not here today, but I really wanted to take this opportunity to thank him. Uh, it's been... It's been... Alright, Dad, take it down. Take a deep breath. In the hardest part of the day. But I've had a fabulous day and I really thank you all for being here. And I know that he would have loved today. <laughs> <laughs> he would have been the loudest, biggest party animal here. Um, and I just want to take the opportunity to thank him for everything that he has given me and everything that he stood for. And I'm an immensely proud daughter. And I just wanted to raise a glass to the most fabulous dad that anyone could ever ask for, and that is dad. Yeah, yeah. Dad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I also wanted to say a huge thank you to my family, what an international family, I'm family <laughs> in Australia, in Canada, in Holland, North London. <laughs> um, and I'm really, really grateful to you all for making the effort to come here today, because I love my family. And, um, Really, really grateful for you all to be here today. It means the world to me to have my family's support. I'm immensely grateful for my family's support. So thank you all very much for being here today. And I'd like to thank my extended family. These are people that aren't blood relatives, but they're people that are my family, and they're people that um, I'm immensely um, grateful to have in my life. I'd like to start by saying a huge thank you to Anne, oh. because I don't know what I would do without you, Anne, particularly over the last year. Been there since I was a small child, but you have uh, really looked after me, and I couldn't thank you enough. So thank you, Anne. I'd like to say a big thank you to my best friend John as well. He's another member of the family. Um, I couldn't do it without you, John. You're always there in a crisis, and you are always there watching my back. And I love you dearly, John. So that's my gay husband. <laughs> Um, last but not least, the extended family that I have to say a huge thank you for. 
gonna get wobbly again. It's my maid of honor. She, I couldn't, I, I can't really put into words what Alex means to me, my maid of honor. She goes beyond anything um, that, that friends should be. And uh, she's my traveling companion this year. She's been there every step of the way through all the real traumas that I've had over the last year. And, and, and all throughout my life, and I'd like to thank you publicly for being uh, an amazing, amazing person. Thank you. So, thank you to my family and my extended family. I'd like to raise a toast to family. family. To family. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Finally, got somebody to thank. <laughs> um, I don't know anyone that's followed our saga of a relationship for the last six years. Um, yeah, we've had ups, we've had downs, but I think I always knew that we'd get here eventually. <laughs> I think you deep down did too. Um, I don't want to go too much into it, but I had a very dark day, end of May, where I got some terrible news health-wise. It was an incredibly bad, dark day. And uh, the first thing I thought when I was told the news was I want the love of my life back. And I want to marry him. And we decided to get married and get back together on the same day. We don't do anything by halves. And he basically turned the worst day of my life into the best day of my life. And I want to thank him for that. So I want to raise a toast to love and marriage. To love and marriage. Thank you, love and marriage. Thank you all. I love you all. Thank you for coming. celebrating today with us and also for your kind and generous gifts. When I first met my beautiful wife Jen, she was collapsed drunk on a sofa in Jack's life. <laughs> <laughs> in the air <laughs> with her equally drunk friend Alex Milner <laughs> using her foot as a microphone and singing into her cheek since I've known her, the shoes aren't so cheap anymore, <laughs> but nothing much else has changed. It wasn't long before we were madly in love, and throughout the roller coaster of the last six years, that's the one thing that's really endured for us. I tell Jem all the time how much I love her and how beautiful she is, but I probably don't tell her enough how happy she makes me, and how kind, clever, funny and brave she is. So if you wouldn't mind, you will raise a glass to Jen. Mrs. Stewart, my wife. Stuart. 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 I'd like to thank the man most responsible for these qualities in Jem, which is Jem's dad, Keith. 
but sadly he's not with us anymore. He's played a massive part in making this day happen. <laughs> I'd also like to thank the members of Jem's family who've made me feel welcome. Geographically, you're often very far apart, but as a family, you're very close together. Thank you to my mum and dad for everything. You're responsible for all the best parts of me, none of the worst. <laughs> <laughs> and the love, help and support you've given to me and Jem has been unequalled. Plus, you always pry us with alcohol when you're is it? And you're allowed to throw the best pie in there. Yeah. I'd like to thank Chelsea and all the staff at the Aviator for making today run smoothly. Oh, I'm sure you'll club. agree. <laughs> oh, and the football club. They keep you happy most of the time. I'm sure you'll agree they've done a great job for us. Yeah. And thank you to my best man and ushers for your sterling work. And for making sure I made it back from the island unscathed. <laughs> Only just. Only just yeah. <laughs> I'd also like to wish happy birthday to my mate Dave. Hey! 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 I've got absolutely no excuse if I forget it in the future. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, I'd like to propose a toast to the bridesmaids, who all look lovely Beautiful. and who've done a great job of looking after Jem not only today but also in recent times. Absolutely. So if you'd all be upstanding and raise a glass. <laughs> to the bridesmaids. Upstanding. <laughs> <laughs> Over to you, G-Man. Tilt your chairs a little bit to face this way. <laughs> so, uh, before we get going, obviously, I've got the stuff together. I just want to say a couple of words, basically. Um, Luke, it's an honour for me to be stood here today. So, when you gave me the call and sort of said, you know, me and Gemma have decided to get hitched and would like to be your best man, I just was overjoyed. And I know that people will sort of say, oh, you're nervous and you, you know, you're building up to the best man speak. I would have done it that day for you, mate. Without any of these cards or anything, I could just do it like that. So thank you for that. Thank um, you. The second thing I'd like to say is, um, Gemma, when you walked in, I, I mean, everyone would agree. I've heard vintage glamour, I've heard pop star. The drawers just dropped. You look absolutely beautiful. Before we go to... Uh, like a real... oh, <laughs> I've got to say another quick word of thanks to uh, Fran and Roy for helping me out with these pictures. My thanks especially to you, Fran, because it was the morning after the engagement party, you're talking about their parties, right? Where, basically thanks to Roy's uh, stow, yeah. <laughs> it's a very potent alcohol, Mama, you know about that. Yeah. <laughs> they were particularly bad hangovers that morning. Yet yeah, Fran got up, came down, we went through the pictures, we talked about stuff. Uh, Luke was born uh, 17th of April, 1976. Uh, this is him about one years old, and what a cute you look. <laughs> Here he is on his favourite swing in the garden. And what happened to your blonde hair? You know, did you die? And there's another one when he's little. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I've got to say, Keith, wherever you are, I'm sorry, mate. Yeah. You're about to come on the scene. Yes, collateral damage here. You're about to come on the scene, so basically. Um, right, that's the key back for that stone. Thank you very much. Look at those cups, by the way. And here we go, let's keep going on to it. Obviously, he's starting to get a bit older now, that's about four or five. Um, and the next um, set of pictures actually answer a question for me. This is Luke with his football there, out in the woods, I think, Holy Woods, was it? Yeah, Holy Woods. Where he used to go walking with his nans. Loving him, pink wellies, though. Yeah. <laughs> and I have them. Over the years, over the years, I've all said, well, who's your team? You know, who do you follow? You know, I support Newcastle. Jem supports Chelsea, so he's, he's kind of got a bit of a thing yeah, for that as well. He never actually committed to a team, did he? Whereas me and Fran went through the archives and we can now answer this conundrum. Oh!
there you go. So, uh, next one is again featuring Keith, I believe. It's like Naruto before it was actually invented, wasn't it? I've got to say, Keith, though, what? Is that a blind ninja or what are you trying to do? <laughs> Next one, moving on again. It's a bit older now. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> This is, this is the kids are upstairs. It's about eight years old in former Tina on holiday. First holiday abroad. First holiday abroad, actually shot the yeah, jumping into the pool. Um, again, there's another thing that's been answered in the next couple of slides that you'll see. So do fishing, which is something that he really likes to do. And uh, as you can see, sort of sat there, quite sort of uh, competitive, I suppose. I know the next one, but this is a bit of a theme. Do you actually do anything when you yeah. fish? No. Sets the thing up and, and that's it. But, um, Luke just mentioned the island, that's where we all went on stag to a couple of weeks ago, Rosea Island, out near South End. Um, and Luke decided to do a bit of fishing then as well, so... Um, <laughs> it's not what it looked like. He's <laughs> actually sorting out his stuff, look, he's just about to do a bit of fishing. Aww. But he didn't, the, the theme seems to be he didn't really didn't catch, catch anything at all. <laughs> <laughs> so, again, we went back into the archives and we tried to find something, and there you go. <laughs> You basically did yeah. manage to catch something. I don't know if you remember when that was and whether yeah, you actually pulled them. Yeah, we went out on the boat. We uh, complimented my dad's friend. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So nice to get that stuff. Got off fast off. Yeah. Right, next one a bit older again. Oh, 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 sorry, mate. Yeah. This thing here yeah. is a prefix. Ah. <laughs> Cove secondary, I believe. Yeah. Make prefects. Little did they know he'd be involved in the Fernhill Road incident some years later. A <laughs> few other people in the room might know a bit about. Yeah. 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 Oh, I went for the ladies now. Oh. Yeah. Oh. I've got curtains there, Jen. I don't know, it's not the wrong ones, but I didn't like it. Okay, well, just moving, moving swiftly on. Couldn't um, not put a few, pic a few pictures of his friends up. I think this might be down the end. Yeah. Down the end, had to have a picture of him down the end, of course. Oh, really? Oh, okay. A few years later? Oh, I'm not sure which wedding that is. That's our christening. It's your christening, then. You yeah. Claire? Yeah. And then a few more years later as well. Hey. <laughs> that's our wedding. Bring, bring you right up to date, basically. Um, the next section I've got is a bit about me and Luke, because after, obviously, he'd grown up, and it was, uh, I think it was 96 that we first met. Uh, me and Chris Dick worked together at NRSD, there you are. And then, basically, me, uh, Ian, Blowsy, Mark, we always hang out with someone called Mary Jane. We had a great time. It's <laughs> <laughs> a great drum and bass records and video games and all that. Um, but then, obviously, you know, I lived in Barnborough for three years and I moved out to London. But me and Luke stayed really good friends, you know, we stayed in good contact and we've always, you know, given each other a call here and there. And, you know, I think one of the main reasons for that, Luke, is because we've got so much in common. You know, we had similar cars, we had similar movies and all that. And actually, to sort of illustrate that point, I've got something for you now. Yeah. Luke Bobbery. Oh, this is hey. for you, mate. I've got three questions to do with us and the, the stuff that we're into. I think you're going to get three out of three. So, are you ready? Go on then. First one. What is a bong sow? What is a bong sow? It's a martial arts move. Yeah, show me it. Stand up, show me it. A bong sow. Look. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> well done. A little bit of history on that. It's an overarm elbow high wing chun move. Myself, Rob, and. Keith. Keith and Luke all studied at the same martial arts school. I think you guys started doing it first in Guildford, and then I joined the same class in Richmond. Um, so that's why I thought I'd mention that one. Next one up. <laughs> Name one Sega Dreamcast launch title. Anyone, anyone. Launch title. Launch title. Sega Rally. Sonic Adventure. Sonic Adventure is on the list. <laughs> yes. I thought you'd say Power Stone. The reason I put this one up today is because me and Luke managed to get a um, Slightly warm uh, Sega <laughs> Dreamcast on the launch yeah. day <laughs> through my sister's mate Rob at HMV. <laughs> and uh, basically, throughout our sort of friendship, we've always had similar tastes in games, and I thought it would be good to put that one in. Right, the next one looks pretty typical, so I hope you're going to get it. We'll see how it goes. Third and final question What is the first line of the song in Nursery oh, Creeps? Oh, mate. Uh, <laughs> and I know you've had a long day, so. 
Right, I don't... Uh, <laughs> I'm just going to take a punt in the dark. Yeah. This is my favourite, one of the favourite bits. Is it, I see you go down to a cold mirror? No, that's, that's um, the first one. Rising Sun, uh, I was going to do that one as well. It is. Recollect me, darling, raise me to your lips. The reason I put Massive Attack in there is because uh, Luke and I went down with Ian to see Massive Attack play in Bristol, their hometown. We're in the second game they've ever done at that hometown. And that's just one of the best days of my life, yeah. guys, you know. We sat there, remember Luke, we were singing along in harmonies, the kind of and unfinished things. Sun was out. It's just brilliant, you know, and that's why I thought, you know, I put that into this speech because it illustrates, as I said, our friendship, basically. So, two out of three ain't bad there, is it, mate? <laughs> cool, right. Um, next page. The last thing I'd like to say about you, Luke is basically four years ago, almost to the day, Luke was my best man, which makes this. So easy, you know, because I'm just reciprocating. And it's just, at the time I thought he was a great best man, it was a wonderful speech, and you know, did everything right, and I just thought one day I hope that he can marry Jeb and he can call me, and here I am, so excellent, thanks very much. You were, oh, you were a brilliant help with the logs. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that was that, we took it down, and we actually did a similar thing on Luke's thing, and, and here I am. <laughs> this is two weeks ago when I see you, right? and that's me, and there's Luke here in the corner. This is where I almost got set on fire. That's <laughs> amazing. <laughs> Almost. Uh, so I'm glad again I was able to help out there and uh, I was doing more of the burning than the actually carrying of things, but still. Doing more of the <laughs> Yeah, I did. Now, the, the last section of the speech um, is about a certain special lady. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Don't escape, Jen, I'm afraid. No, I know it's not going to be. Right, let's go. Yeah. You know, he, you mean well to him, you really do. And I know you guys have had your ups and downs. <laughs> <laughs> to, to end up like, dressed like that, you must have been through some time. <laughs> um, but I will just I echo next to what was said <laughs> by Brian and by Luke. Uh, you've got a room full of people here that just love you. you know? yeah. I know you've got hard times ahead, everyone knows it, but we're here to support you and we're here to love you. So, Absolutely. basically. Oh, yeah. Me and Jen have got a bit of a shared kind of dirty secret. We both are in love with this hey. <laughs> So Jen, I'm going to try and do a little bit of a prank here. Yeah, you, you'll be able to follow this, I'm sure. Okay. You ready? And I'm Dave. <laughs> Otom Sprout. Kana Chibana. It's just me. Yeah? <laughs> Just to end the energy groups. Me, That's too small. We love you to join us. <laughs> Your loose hey. Come on women, grab your men, men, grab your women, and all the others grab the others.
shake it. Shake, shake, shake it. I wanna see you shake it. You're not shaking it. Shake it, shake it, shake, 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 shake it like a Polaroid picture. Come on, shake it. I wanna see you shake it. Shake it, shake it, shake, 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 shake it like a Polaroid picture. Come on, shake it. 